Hey everybody, Brittany Haas here, Chief Adventure Officer with Alp Adventures Unguided. I am currently on a bike tour riding across the Alps right now from Fusen to Lake Garda. I'm on day four, uh, which is a downhill day, and I've already ridden through Germany, Austria, a little bit in Switzerland, and I'm now in Italy. Um, up at my high point actually, or just a little bit below it. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about what you might want to bring with you on a bike tour. I've mentioned before and there's a lot of information out there, um, but bike touring is something that I recommend for even people who are not cyclists in their home country. Bike touring in Europe in the Alps is very friendly. There are great routes available. Um, on this tour in particular, there's some great infrastructure. They have bike shuttles all over the place that will take you up and over. Um, certain passes if you don't want to ride them or if they present certain difficulties and so I wanted to talk a little bit about what you should bring with you. A lot of people might think that they need a lot of specific cycling gear. You see I'm wearing cycling pants, cycling gloves, cycling shoes, but that's only because I do this quite a bit um, and actually because I didn't know any better when I bought this because I also thought that I needed this. The truth is that a lot of the specific cycling gear is tailored for racers and road cyclists who really need you know the the speed and a little bit more functionality with bike touring you often see people in normal shoes normal hiking shorts um, it's a very different world and so before you think that for your bike tour in the alps that you need to go out and buy all of this specific equipment i want to talk to you a little bit about what i have with me and what's important and what's not so we're going to start out by looking at the bike and then we're going to talk a little bit about what I'm wearing and what to wear and then we're actually going to open up my bags and see what I have with me on this tour. Now I want to give a disclaimer. I'm not an expert on cycling by any means. I do a lot of different sports. Cycling is one of many that I do but any of the topics that I'm talking about here I would encourage you to dig into them deeper on the internet if it interests you to find actual experts. This is designed to give you an idea for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience doing bike touring, um, what you might want to consider and bring with you on the tour. So let's go ahead and take a look at the bike and then we'll take a look at what I'm wearing and then we'll go into a little bit more detail in my bags. All right, so here's the bike that I have with me on the tour right now. Um, this is a new bike, I purchased it, but the setup is very similar, at least from the components perspective, to what you would be riding if you were to rent a bike. Um, I'll start by going over what's on here and talk just a little bit about the, the components that are on it, not in a lot of detail, and then we'll get into what I'm wearing. So, first of all, you see on my handlebars I have a few things. Um, this is my bell. This is required by law in Germany. Um, it's very handy. The Europeans tend to be very responsive to the bell for the most part. And if somebody's in your way on the trail and they don't hear you coming, um, it's really nice and easy to have. If you rent a bike, your bike should have one on it. This here um, is like an odometer for my bike. It's wired to the bike. It's very handy to have. It'll show me how far I've ridden, my riding time, a lot of great details, um, but it's wired to the bike. So if you have a rental bike, you probably won't have one of these on you. A GPS would do a lot of the same functionality. Um, the purpose of this is really more to even know the overall mileage that I've put on my bike so that I can keep up with my maintenance and everything. Um, I have a GoPro camera on here because I am sharing quite a bit of footage with you guys. I don't recommend that everybody carries a GoPro with them. And then a GPS. Um, from a GPS perspective, I find it handy to have for bike tours. I find that on a bike tour, I almost never stop my bike and look at a map. The GPS, you can follow along. You can also do this on your cell phone. I will say that this route that I'm on has been rerouted quite a bit and the signage is great. So I tend to follow the signs, which has taken me off track from the GPS a time or two. Um, and there have been another, another time or two when I've wanted to check things and I've been happy that I had the GPS. But I would definitely not say that a GPS is a requirement. It is, at least not on this tour. On some tours that are not as well signed out, it's very nice to have along. Um, there are also map holders that you can buy for your handlebars and a lot of bike tours carry bags. 
here on their handlebars. You can mount your map on it and look at it that way. Um, then I have my, down here, I have an emergency pump. That's important. If you rent a bike, you'll have one. And a bike-specific water bottle. That's one piece of gear you should invest in. A good $2 or something. They're pretty inexpensive to purchase. And then I have here um, this bag underneath my saddle. This has my emergency gear in it, a replacement tube. It has some repair for my tube if I get a flat, as well as some tools. I'll show you that a little bit later. Then I have my two um, Ortley pannier bags here. I have camping gear, so most of you won't need this much gear if you're staying in hotels. Um, if you're camping, you'll have a little bit more gear. Most people who do camp carry a lot more gear than I do. Um, but as an ultralight backpacker, I've transferred that over to cycling. And for example, a lot of bicycle tours have bags on the front. Uh, also, I do not do that. Um, and I have, yeah, pretty minimal compared to what most people have. So I have these two bags. This is my tent in here in this dry bag because of the forecast. And this strange green thing here is one of my locks. I have two locks. Um, this lock is my main lock. It's a more secure lock. It's a new brand. It's called Light Lock. I won't get into the pluses and minuses of locks. I will say that there's never been one that I've fully fallen in love with. Um, anything that's really secure is also a pain to carry around and deal with. Um, but that's the lock that I'm using at this point in time. And then I have the cable lock, which uh, is not very secure. People could just cut through that in a second with wire cutters but I use it to secure my panniers onto the bike when I stop and um, a lot of the time the small lock that I have here doesn't fit around the bike and a nearby post. I can just put it around the back tire and the, the bike frame so then I add the cable lock as well. Uh, a couple things about the components on this bike and what it has. First of all something that I never really experienced in the United States but that's great over here in Europe is I have integrated lights so my lights on the bike run off of a generator that's in the wheel. So I never have to worry about batteries or anything like that. My components are all Shimano LX components, which is similar to what you'll have if, you'll, if you rent a bike. I have disc brakes on this bike as well. Um, I, that's another debate that you could hear people debate over for hours. I just bought my first bike last summer with disc brakes. And I will personally say that I will not go back. You do need to be careful that you're not holding the brakes the whole way downhill so that you don't um, warp the disc plate. Um, but with the proper braking technique, I find that they are much, much better than the alternative. The big question, of course, is what do you need to buy and what don't you need to buy if you're going on a bike tour in the Alps? I would start by saying you really don't need to buy much of anything. Um, there are some things that add comfort. There are a lot of things that are over marketed when it comes to bike touring. Of course, a helmet is very important. A helmet can be rented if you are renting a bike here when you get here or if you don't want to bring your helmet over. Um, but a helmet is of course very important if you're bike touring. I'll start by talking about the next important thing I guess which would be um, the pants. So a lot of bike to cyclists wear these padded shorts called chamois, spelled C-H-A-M-O-I-S. Uh, there is debate in the bike, in the cycling community, whether or not the chamois actually help. So I'll talk about your relationship with the bike seat in a different video. But a lot of people think that a softer pad makes the bike seat more comfortable and for several reasons it's not correct. So I personally wear a chamois. I have two pairs with me on this trip. I have one pair that is kind of a, an underwear chamois and so it's not designed to be worn on its own. It's worn underneath something else and so I have those on right now underneath these um, pants that I have on and when it gets warm I will switch out and put on a pair of hiking shorts that I have over them. I also have another pair that can be worn by themselves. Um, I wash one pair every day 
and use the other pair and try to keep them as fresh as possible. This is for a lot of reasons, which I'll talk about. Um, but when you get into talking about saddle sores and such, it's really important to um, keep things clean and keep the hygiene good there. So I wear the chamois. Um, a lot of people say you don't need to have them. With a chamois, um, you do get what you pay for. So the really cheap ones um, are probably not even worth spending money on. You would be better off with a pair of tight fitting Spanx bicycle shorts. Um, and you can wear another looser pair of shorts on top of that if you're not into tight clothing. Um, rather than paying money for a cheap chamois. And I'll talk more about this in the video that I make about the bicycle seat again. Um, but there are several reasons for that, but a, a cheap chamois doesn't necessarily always help you. Um, also, for some people, women who might have problems if there's a lot of moisture um, or anything, a chamois wouldn't also be recommended for you. So chamois are popular. A lot of people think they need them. I would lean, if you're on a rental bike and not on your own saddle, I would lean toward encouraging you to buy a chamois, a good quality chamois. And actually, I would forget buying anything else and just spend the money on a chamois. Um, but it's not a requirement. Another thing you'll see I'm wearing cycling gloves. One thing that's very helpful, especially if you're not on your own bike, if you're on a rental bike, is to have gloves that have some padding, gel padding here. Because you get, um, from having your bike on the bike, your arms on the bicycle, sometimes you can get some issues with that. And I'll do another video about ergonomics on a bike a little bit later. But uh, this is something that's very handy to have. Um, all right, so clothing. The rest of your clothing, the big rule, avoid cotton. Many of you who are used to being in the mountains, you know this. But you want something that's going to wick the moisture away. Um, I own a lot of bike jerseys. I don't like them. I, I don't know why. I just, I don't like bike jerseys. So what I found instead as a solution, and this also is not a requirement, so it's nice to have a pocket right here on the back of your shirt or whatever you have. This is, I guess, one of the, one of the benefits of a bicycle jersey. I have this vest that I bought somewhere on clearance online, and I have started leaving my bicycle jerseys at home, and instead I wear my normal hiking clothes. I have a short sleeve shirt on underneath this, and I put this over, and this I can wear with anything, and I always have a bicycle jersey. Another benefit of the jersey is that you have this collar here. So the places where you're going to sunburn the most are the back of your neck and the back of your legs. And another thing about the bicycle jersey, if it's not, it needs to be long, or whatever shirt you wear should be long in the back, because it's also your back right here might get burned if you don't have a long enough shirt. So. I would recommend wear your hiking shirts, um, something that wicks moisture away, no cotton. If you have to have a pocket up here, and for me it's very handy, I have asthma, so I like to keep my inhaler here all the time, um, then buy something cheap like this that you can put over your regular clothes. Or if you're wearing regular shorts over your bicycle shorts and you have pockets there, that works as well. So I'm wearing bicycle shoes with clips. And um, this is actually very rare over here in Europe for somebody touring to be wearing clips. If you're renting a bike, your bike will not have clip pedals. Um, so if you do prefer to use clips, then I would definitely recommend that you bring your own pedals over and have those installed on the rental bike. Um, I wear them because I have them and I'm used to them. But there are a lot of, when you're on the bike trails, so here in the Alps and in Europe, we have a lot of bike trails that are designated paved pathways for bicycles. And with that, they tend to go under tunnels and they route them around to keep them away from the traffic. And sometimes you have tight corners. Um, there's a rule when you're going downhill to go into a tunnel, I always shift down because I know at the end there's gonna be a tight right-hand turn and a steep uphill. Um, so I also cycle quite a bit with my shoes out of the clips and I have pedals on my bike that have clips on one side and regular flat pedals on the other side. So I have the option if I want to to stay out of the clips while I'm pedaling. Um, but really the important thing about the shoe is you want to have a shoe that has a sturdy sole on the bottom 
you don't want a really soft sole in the bottom. But when you look at the people who are out doing cycle touring for weeks, months at a time, they're just cycling around in their regular shoes. So if you don't have cycling shoes, don't worry about it. Actually, it's better because then you don't have to bring an extra pair of shoes to wear around town in the evening. And they also make specific socks for cycling. Not necessary. Um, just wear whatever lighter weight cycling or hiking socks you might have. Uh, one thing to keep in mind in the winter, if you are doing this in cold weather, your feet will freeze. Um, your feet don't move really while they're on the bike. They're going around. And so if it is in cold weather, then you might want something heavier. But in summer, I usually wear a very lightweight, short hiking sock that's not cotton. So out of what I'm wearing, what might you need to buy? Well, you'd need a helmet. A pair of gloves might not be bad, but certainly not necessary. And a chamois, um, a good quality chamois if you're interested in that, but also not necessary. All right. Let's take a look at what is in the bags. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've brought with me on this trip. Um, we're not going to look at the camping gear. I have camping gear with me. If you're staying in hotels, you'll have a lot less luggage than I do and a lot less weight on your pack than I do right now. Um, if you're camping, you know what you need for camping. I recommend ultra light, um, but we'll look at everything else and see what I have with me. First of all, this is my emergency kit that stays on my bike with me all the time. Um, if you do get a rental bike, you will have some of this equipment will come with it. So I have a replacement tube. I have had a lot of flat tires in my life. And um, so I, I never leave without a tube. I would recommend at a minimum before coming on a bike tour, knowing how to change your own flat tire. So I have these handy gadgets, which are also used to change the tube out. I have some tools. Um, rental bike should also come with some tools. I uh, These are not only used for repair, even if you don't know how to do much with your bike, you can also use these to make some necessary adjustments on your bike throughout the tour to get some more comfort on your bike. So I would definitely recommend having some tools with you. And then I have these little self-adhesive tire repair strips um, to fix a hole in my tire. And that's pretty much it for my emergency kit here as far as bike repair goes. I would not say that if, if you're coming on a bike tour and you're renting a bike, you don't really need to buy any of this. Okay. So, um, hopefully when you do your bike tour, you aren't working. <laughs> But I'm working, so I have quite a bit of um, electronics with me. <laughs> this is all cables and charging platforms and replacement batteries and such. Um, so hopefully you don't need to bring this with you. Another very important item is chamois cream. So uh, the two things that really influence how you feel on your bike seat are the friction and the fit of the bike seat, not the softness. And so this chamois cream, I discovered this a little bit late in my cycling life, and I wish I had discovered it earlier, but this is one thing that almost all bicycle tours agree on. Some use simple diaper cream. I haven't tried that yet, um, but you wanna apply this everywhere that touches the seat, that's back and front, um, before your tour each day, some people say even after the tour, I usually just do it beforehand. Um, and this is definitely worth, worth an investment. I prefer a tube. They, a lot of them come in little canisters. I prefer a tube just because then it's a little bit more sanitary if you're sharing with multiple people. Then I have um, a buff. I always have a buff. Uh, if it gets cold, I would use it probably to cover my neck. I haven't needed it. And as well, I have gloves. Then I have my um, Alpha Mentors t-shirt, which everybody should have one, right? So Alpha Mentors here. And then I have um, these shorts. So these are regular hiking shorts. And these shorts 
um, once I am done with these pants that I have on, um, I would put on these shorts with keeping the under um, chamois pad that I have on. If you just do the under pad for the chamois, that's a lot cheaper than buying the, the full short that's designed to be worn on its own. And another thing while I'm talking about this, um, your pants. So you don't need cycling pants, but if you do wear hiking pants, the biggest issue you're going to have is making sure that the, um, the pant isn't too loose and it's not rubbing on the bike. It's not good for the pant. So they do make, I don't have them here, but these little clip things that you can wrap around your ankle and hold your pant close. Um, they're not terribly fashionable. However, they're pretty normal over here and people in Europe accept and appreciate them. So then I have my um, toiletries bag. Uh, for water, I carry a one liter platypus and I carry a water bottle. And I don't usually carry much more. I find that there are plenty of places to refill water along the way. There are quite a few fountains in the towns and um, my go-to is always the cemeteries typically have a um, water faucet so that people can water the graves in the cemetery and um, most of the time the water there is drinking water there's a towel that's for camping i'll leave that out um, tissues of course then i have some some rain gear now this is all also bicycling specific rain gear um, you don't need bicycling specific rain gear. I own it because I do this enough that it justifies it. But you can just wear it, bring your regular rain jacket, whatever you would bring. And maybe it's not as friendly with the wind or whatever, uh, but just you don't need to spend money on that. And I have um, rain pants as well. If this is May right now, if it was in the summer and it was warmer, I would either only bring my rain pants or these pants. I would not have both pairs of pants on me. And luckily I haven't needed the rain gear on this trip. And then I have, of course, a down jacket. Um, and I may not bring this on a tour in the summer. This is just because the weather has been a little bit unpredictable and cooler lately. All right, so the rest of the gear that's in there is all, actually, nope, there's a little bit more. The rest is camping gear. So in here I have some extra layers. Um, these are covers for my shoes. I brought them because there was a forecast for quite a bit of rain. And I didn't want my feet to get too wet because it's also somewhat cold. And I have poor circulation so I take extra precautions. Um, and then I have a cycling specific hat. Again, you don't need a cycling specific hat. You can wear a normal hat. Um, but in the summer, check the weather forecast. You may or may not need all of this with you. The thing is, when you're on a bicycle tour, you're not out remotely in the mountains for kilometers away from civilization. And so you don't really need to pack like you would pack if you were climbing a mountain. Okay, so um, here I have a really lightweight, super lightweight backpack. And um, this is really handy to have something like this with you. As you saw earlier, I have some expensive electronics on my handlebars. And I also have a few other things in here that are worth money. Um, so when I park my bike somewhere and I head into a store, I throw everything in this backpack and then I have it with me. Guidebook. Don't use it very often. I have my snacks, which I started out the tour with a few too few snacks. And um, now I would say I have a few too many snacks. Um, snacks are similar to what you would buy if you were hiking. A lot of salty foods. The great thing about Europe is, um, you know, pick up your bread at a bakery, pick up your cheese at a cheese store, and eat, eat European along the way. So this is part of my electronics for my work kit that I have with me. Sunblock. This is my first aid kit. I'll put some resources online within the next month that talk a little bit more about what you need in your first aid kit. So 
I have an extra pair of shoes here. Um, these, I love these Merrells. They're an older version. The newer ones look different, but they're super packable and easy to travel with and they're my go-to travel shoe. But I wouldn't cycle in these. So if you are cycling in your shoes, you want something a little bit more sturdy. But since I'm wearing my cycling shoes during the day, this is a great lightweight alternative for me to bring with me for the evening. I also have flip-flops with me. Nice for showering and campgrounds. Um, and also this tour get, will get hot. <laughs> it will be warm by the end of the tour. Um, as you go south, it always gets warmer. So those will be handy. I have my computer. This you hopefully don't bring with you. Okay, and then I have my clothing that I brought with me. Um, if I was not camping, on, if I did not have camping gear, I would have brought a little bit more clothing. Um, in the US, I always went out to dinner after a hike in my hiking clothes and felt okay about it. But in Europe, I don't. <laughs> so this is an extra pair, my other pair of my chamois that I have with the pad underneath. And I, of course, have a pair on right now. Um, I have a long sleeve shirt. This is the butter shirt from Mountain Hardware. I'm obsessed with hooded shirts. So this is more for me to wear around in the evening or as an emergency if this shirt gets really gross and I need a, a long sleeve shirt. I have a short sleeve comfortable shirt for wearing around in the evening. And I would have liked to have brought jeans on this trip, but I threw in the camping gear at the last minute and didn't really have the planning capacity to make the space for it. Um, so I just brought a skirt, one of my comfortable skirts. What a bring comfortable shorts, whatever you want. Um, one option that I really like about the extra touring shorts that I brought um, is that I, these are also a great option for me to wear in the evening. I can just take off my bike shorts and wear these. And then I have an extra pair of socks and some extra underwear. And that's all I brought with me on this trip as far as additional clothing. So, as a summary, if you were to go out and buy something, at a minimum, I would recommend a water bottle that's this size that fits for a bike, and chamois cream or diaper cream. If you want to spend a little bit more money, then consider a good pair of chamois gloves with some gel protection here on the wrists and if you want to go even one step further you can get a vest like I have that's designed for cycling and that's it um, you really don't need to spend a lot of money on gear for cycling I hope you enjoyed this I hope you learned a little bit from it um, feel free to post any questions or to, to put any questions I'll do my best to get everything answered Look forward then to the additional videos that I'll be posting about keeping a good relationship between your bum and the bike seat, as well as a little bit later, I'll be posting something on adjusting your bike for more ergonomic fit. You can check out bike touring on the Alp Adventures website, www.alpinventuresunguided.com. It's www.alpenventures. U-N-G-U-I-D-E-D.com. Head on to Adventures and onto Bike Touring. And you can look at the bike tour that I'm on right now and follow along. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and check out some of the Facebook Live videos that we have happening there. Thank you so much for watching. Happy adventuring.